We're joined by Michael, who oversees $1 billion and whose market field flagship fund beat 91% of its peers back in 2007. Well, thanks so much for joining us here on In the Loop, Michael. So define the difference between a bear market and a correction in a bull market. Well, the, the most important difference is that in a correction in a bull market, you do actually go back and create a new high later on, whereas in a bear market, you're, you may have a significant bounce at the end of the correction, but you don't get anywhere near your highs and then find yourself back into a downdraft. And do you think then that we will get back to April really marks the high this year for the S&P and the Dow? Yeah. Um, do we get back to that level? You know, I, I think certainly something like the Nasdaq 100, which made its high a little bit low in June, will make a new high. I think the Dow has a good shot. The S&P probably just about makes it. X, certainly X for financials really should be able to make it. But, you know, my feeling is that the next leg of this, of this long bull market is going to be much more sector driven. Uh, it's going to be much more of what we would call a bottom-up bull market. It's going to be stock by stock, sector by sector. And, and you know, you, what you really should be doing right now is paying attention to the stuff which is, which is going down less than, than everything else. And, and, you know, one of the things I'd like to say is that the U.S. has been something, like, something of a safe haven year to date. All the headlines would, would lead you to believe that this has been a, a disastrous performance by the U.S. equity market relative to the rest of the world. In fact, the S&P, as of last night, was down about 10%. With the average European market down about 20 percent and the average emerging market or a bunch of emerging markets down about 25 percent. Right. So we're certainly faring better on a relative yeah. basis, but it doesn't make anyone feel better when they're here in the U.S. and they're looking at their 401k no, statement or their portfolio. No, I, look, I, I think there's a problem in the global, in the global economy. I, I think it's emerging out of the emerging market complex. And I think there's a problem in the global banking system. And I think it's located in Europe. And I think for a change, the U.S. is collateral damage. In, in, in that process and it's, it's punished along with the rest of the world but you know if you really want to look for the problems and the solutions they really lie outside these shores at this point in time. So then how does that impact a sector if you say that the next upswing mm -hmm. will really be sector dri driven and mm -hmm. bottoms up analysis how do you know which ones to pick? Well, think, what are you looking at? I think you start with that insight and you, you, you stay firm in the belief that the domestic US economy is, is actually in okay shape and therefore you look for sectors which are really internally driven and, and you would start I think with a sector like retail where the news is, is still okay. Uh, I think you have to make the assumption that employment is not going to get significantly worse from where we are but I, I feel okay with that assumption. Uh, you look for other internally driven sectors that, that, that really feed off what's going on in the domestic economy rather than the international economy. We're back now with the chairman of Market Field Asset Management, Michael Shovel. Michael, thanks so much for staying with us. I also have here my colleague, Adam Johnson. Um, and I want to continue along this discussion. Mm -hmm. We were just talking about financials during the commercial break and leading into the commercial break. You like retail stocks. What about financials? No, I mean, I've been on record for, for months saying that it's just, it's just not where you want to be. And, and you know, I think within, within the U.S. financials, the main problem they face is that they're simply not making money at the level that people would have expected under the new regime. I think if you look outside of the U.S., there are real funding strains now, you know, in the European system. And European financials are a fairly dangerous place to be right now. Now, given that financials are the second largest group in the S&P, technology is the first. Yep. Can you really be positive the market if the number two group and the group that's funding everybody else is not doing business? Well, you know, index is a, um, a, just a mathematical process and, and the financials will become a smaller and smaller weighting in a, in, in a rising, rising S&P. It's a drag, but uh, if you went back to the 1980s, you started with the energy complex massive compared to the rest of the S&P and you had a pretty good decade while the energy complex didn't do anything very useful for you. So it, it wouldn't be the first time that you saw prior leadership just, just get punished all the way through the recovery. And how much lower could the banks go? Oh, uh, I mean, I don't really have a target, but in a liquidation, they can be pushed another, you know, another 10 percent below where they were. They, they may not stay there, but this is a, you know, this correction really, you know, really has had some power in the last few days. What's the biggest threat to your outlook at this point? Is it what is happening over in Europe? Um, are you worried about, more worried about what is happening here in the U.S. when you look at the economic data that's been released? No, I think, I think the U.S. economic data, you've had a couple of really bad pieces of data. We had one yesterday. You've had a couple of very, very good pieces of data. No one talks about consumer credit growing at the same pace it was in 2007 or the fact that, that you know, for the first time since 2007, if a mortgage is 60 days delinquent, it's more likely to go current than go 90 days delinquent. So there have been some very, very good pieces of data here as well. There's some, there's some sh 
very, very poor ones. The real problem, I think, is, is Europe, where the, you really do have a game of chicken in financial markets between the politicians and the ECB and the financial market. And the financial market wants to see more liquidity and I think needs more liquidity. And the politicians and the ECB don't want to give it more liquidity. And, and I think in the end, the market wins. The question is, how much damage does the market do before the ECB capitulates like it did in the fall of 2008? The other big threat, I think, which is out there and which people have not realized, is that a number of large emerging markets seem to be slowing and seem to be slowing rapidly. And I think that the, the very sharp falls in market like, markets like India and Brazil and, and Turkey and, and Israel, I mean, those look like the beginnings of long bear markets, bear markets with legs. Okay, so where does the growth come from? Because Germany's an exporter, Japan's an exporter, China's an exporter. Where does it come from? You know, I think that a lot of that export-driven growth is going to slow down, and I don't think that's where you want to be in a, global, in a global portfolio. Again, you look at Germany, you look at the DAX, one of the worst performing markets in this correction. I mean, in other words, I think the market is beginning to understand what is, what is, what is going on. I think you look for you know, more defensive industries, and I think you look for the sort of bastion of global safety, which I think in this hemisphere is going to be the United States. If you look at Europe, you look at the United Kingdom. Which, which is much further along its fiscal austerity process than you would have thought. They actually had a, a small budget, you know, basically a budget surplus last month rather than a budget deficit. Obviously, they're still on a one-year basis running a big deficit. But there are, you know, a few countries out there which seem to be doing things differently, and I think that's where you're going to want to be. Michael, I'm going to end it on a yes or no question because we've got to go to break, but mm. would you be putting money into U.S. stocks right now? Not until we see a resolution in Europe. Thank you so much, Michael, for joining us here on In the Loop. That was Michael Shaul, Chairman of Marketfield Asset Management.